What's up guys? My name is Ty. The rules and regulations that will be discussed in this video apply to all games hosted by me. Be sure to pay attention to all the details as these rules are made for your safety and enjoyment of the game. Every airsofter must understand one thing. We are allowed to play on this property as a privilege. It's never a right. My father-in-law Joe lets us play here out of the generosity of his heart. He asks nothing in return. Please show him and his property the highest respect. Also, if you see Joe out on the field, please take a minute to tell him thanks for letting us play on his land. As soon as you pull off the road and onto the driveway leading to the field, you will see a house and buildings. This is Joe's home, so please drive slow and cautiously. There are animals and people that live here, and there is no reason to drive fast past this house. Even if you've been here before, please drive slowly. An accident here would easily get us kicked off this property, so please show your respect. Respect the property as soon as you arrive. Clean up your area. Anything you bring with you needs to leave with you. Even if the trash isn't yours, pick it up. The field should be cleaner than when we step foot on it. If you happen to find someone's lost equipment, please bring it to me. If you lose something, see me for lost and found items. We are allowed to play here as long as everybody understands that you are responsible for your own actions. This is airsoft. There's nothing soft about it. You could fall, you could trip, you could break your leg and hurt yourself in a hundred ways. You could lose an eye, you could lose a tooth, you could get welted up everywhere. God has given us all brains. Use it. Play smart, be responsible. Play it safe. Airsoft is about honor and integrity. Both of these things are a requirement. If you're going to show up to this field and not play with honor and not call all of your hits, then don't come out. Don't waste my time. Don't waste other people's time. We spend a ridiculous amount of money on our hobby, on our sport, on our passion. Why do that if you're not good enough to play by the rules? Wouldn't it be cheaper to stay at home and play first-person shooter video games? That is what you'd be doing if you were found cheating on my field. Other players, game masters, and I are constantly watching. You will be asked to leave, no exceptions. Other conduct that is never allowed at any of my games are the following. No excessive, offensive language, especially towards others. So guys, let's just keep it as clean as we can while we're out there. Arguing with other players is never acceptable. Physical contact with other people should never happen. I in no way ever want to hear someone out there screaming across the field that they hit someone and are trying to call them out. Guys, we wear a ton of gear and we try to hit people at our maximum range. Most of the time, you can't really see your BB past 150 feet plus. Don't assume that you hit them. Keep putting rounds down range until you hear them call out. It's that simple. Lastly, being outwardly stupid and the general lack of respect towards others and this property is a no-go. If I see or hear you out there being dumb and or dangerous, you are gone. Period. Any issue or concern about anything on the field, including other people, needs to be brought up to me or Game Master in private. We will promptly take care of the concern. We are all adults. Let's make sure we act like it. No one needs to lose their cool. Eye protection is the most important piece of gear you will bring with you to the field. It may never, ever leave your face while game is in play. Under no circumstances will that be allowed. Even if you're in the parking lot when the game is still going, there are no safety nets. And a, a stray BB could whiz by. Eyewear must stay on. All eyewear must be ANS. Z87.1 rated or higher. That marking must be on the eye protection for it to be allowed on the field. Paintball masks, like this one, do not have this marking but are allowed. And actually I encourage them for the added face protection. Now high quality steel mesh, again steel mesh, not plastic, do not have this marking. They are still allowed but they must be top quality steel mesh. We will be checking. Make sure you can prove your eyewear's ballistic rating. It is recommended that all players wear full seal eye protection, like these. 
They seal completely around your eyes. However, you may choose to wear glasses style eye protection if you prefer. There is a much greater risk of injury if you wear mesh style protection or glasses style protection because they don't fully cover your eyes. Eyes cannot be replaced. You know the risks. You tell me, is it worth it? Whatever you choose, make sure that your eyewear will stay on your face, be fog free and comfortable for the entire day. Blind man. That is the phrase you will say and or repeat if there is a safety issue on the field. Blind man. If someone is injured or accidentally loses their eye protection, yell this so all can hear. If you hear blind man being called, repeat it until the game comes to a halt. During this time, all players must place their weapons on safe and stay in place until further instructions are given. No advancing, no medicking, or doing anything game related at this time. The issue will be resolved and the game will continue from there. Please use the blind man rule if you see anything else out of place, including four-wheelers, non-players on the field, or horseback riders. These things can happen, so please keep a sharp eye. A BB that strikes any part of a player, their gear, their clothing, or equipment is considered a hit. The weapon in your hand does not count. Holstered weapons and slung secondary weapons on your back are considered part of your equipment and constitute as a hit. Ricochets off objects do not count, but you better be 100% sure it was a ricochet. Otherwise, you should call the hit if there's any questions. Be a good sport and congratulate the shooter of his marksmanship. When hit, signal or yell to the shooter and place your red dead rag on your head or hold it high up in the air, then sit down or lay down. I'll say this one more time. After being hit, you must sit down or lay down, no standing. This is where you would call out for a medic and or head back to the respawn point. Down players may be moved by a live player by placing a hand on them and escorting them to safety. However, if the live player gets hit in this process, that person is hit and must stop moving the down player immediately. Engagement limits and FPS class requirements are shown in this chart. You can easily see your FPS limit with the BB weight you prefer. No weapon will be allowed past these FPS limits. Riflemen and support weapons may shoot full auto and or semi-auto. A DMR can be bolt action or semi-auto, but they must have full auto disabled. Sniper class weapons must be bolt action and they must have a secondary weapon. No exceptions. All weapons will be chronographed for this event. Sniper class weapons cannot engage targets within 80 feet. They must use their secondary weapon. A DMR class weapon cannot engage targets under 50 feet and are recommended to have a secondary weapon. Riflemen and support class weapons have a 10 foot minimum engagement limit, but there is a gray area that must be understood by all players. If you come up to a player that is facing the other direction and is not expecting the hit, you should give them the option and say, bang kill. They can accept this or they can turn and fire at you. It is their option. Again, bang kills are optional and not mandatory. This means if you give them a bang kill, be ready and on the trigger. If their muzzle turns to fire at you, you may return fire in semi-auto. To the body, avoid the head. Make sure the person is not just turning around to look at you before you pull the trigger. This method prevents players from trying to bang kill a large group since it leaves it up to the player if they want to accept the kill. This is always a sticky situation. Use your brain and remember, if you challenge a bang kill by turning and firing, you acknowledge the consequences of your actions and you could take a close hit. When in doubt, back up outside the 10 feet and take the shot in semi-auto or attempt a rubber knife kill. Rubber or plastic knives are allowed. Do not jab or throw a rubber knife at anyone. To successfully knife kill a player, all one has to do is just touch them lightly with it. That person is now dead and cannot be medicked. They must place their red dead rag on their head and go directly back to the respawn. Knife kills are 100% undisputable. If you get touched by a knife, you are dead. But remember, 
when you're trying to take down a player with a knife, they may turn at you at any moment and see you. Understand, you could take a very close hit. Be mindful of your actions. Grenades are allowed for this event. The only authorized grenades are Tornado and Thunderbee grenades. A BB does not have to hit you for it to be considered a kill. If the BB does hit you, you are dead. There are no questions to that. But if a grenade goes off within 10 feet of your person, you are dead. Unless you are behind hard cover. What is hard cover? Small trees are not hard cover. Tall grass is not hard cover. Other players are not hard cover. Your body must be hidden behind an object like a stack of logs, an embankment, an embunker, or a very large tree. You must be completely covered. Pyro of any type is a no-go. If it's got a fuse, it's not allowed. The only smoke allowed is cold burning smoke like these. That's it. No exceptions to that. The medic rules for this game are very simple. We will be using the IFAC rules. IFAC stands for Individual First Aid Kit. You will need to have an IFAC pouch attached to your gear and clearly marked. It can be a side pants pocket if you prefer, but understand where you place this pouch speeds up the time it takes to be medicked. You must provide this pouch. It can be an ammo pouch, it can be a utility pouch. Either way, it doesn't matter. Just have it clearly marked. Inside this pouch are two three-foot ace bandages. You are responsible for providing these as well. They're cheap and can be purchased at any local grocery or pharmacy store. After signaling you are hit and placing your red dead rag on your head, call for a medic. Any live player may medic any dead player. They do this by coming up to you and opening up your IFAC pouch and retrieving a single bandage. They must wrap the entire length of the bandage on a limb. Do not tie them on. Once this is done, remove your red dead rag and you're back in the fight. If you take a second hit, the same process happens. On the third hit, you don't have any more bandages, so you must head back to the respawn point. Once you're at your respawn point, remove both bandages, wrap them back up, and place them back in your IFAC pouch. You will want to roll them back up, as a bandage will be easier for your medic to apply the next time. You may wait a maximum of five minutes to be medic You do not have to wait after being hit to head back to a respawn. There is no bleed out time. You may place your red dead rag on your head and walk back immediately after being hit if you do not wish to be medic or do not have any medic bandages left in your IFAC pouch. Again, you provide the bandages and the pouch. They are only used for yourself. You never use them on somebody else. They should be three foot long and be able to be completely wrapped on a limb before your continuing play. If you show up to the field without this, you cannot be medic and must walk back to the respawn after every hit. This is your responsibility. It's not mine. It's yours. Make sure you get your IFAC for this event. My name is Ty. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you out there on the battlefield. Play it smart. Play with honor.